Spring training is finally over. And as they say, the haze in the barn. And now we get ready for the regular season as the Cubs and the Rangers will play on Thursday night in the games that count. We're going to talk about some of the things that MLB.com has put out, talking about best starting rotation and best bullpen. We'll talk a little bit about the roster and the pitching staff, how the NL Central stacks up as far as players on the IL, and more right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. That's a great way of saying go Cubs. And let's get this thing started right now. Here's your invitation. Hey everybody, it's Mick Gillespie here on the Cubs Baseball Channel at Broadcaster Mick on the socials. And uh, this is the time of year that you got to now sit back and wait a couple of days for the start of the regular season. But we got through spring training, thought the Cubs had a good spring training. Uh, obviously, you would have loved to have uh, Jamison Tyone ready. You would have loved to have had Nick Magical, but it could have been worse. Uh, it looked like maybe Ian Happ. And uh, or maybe I should say Patrick Wisdom and Magical is ready. Wisdom isn't. But, it, you know, it looked like maybe you wouldn't have any of those guys just a few days ago. And right now uh, they're set to go. So we'll keep an eye on, you know, if there's any lingering issues with those hamstrings. But everything else is set and ready to go. And we now start to think about the regular season and how this campaign is going to turn out for the Cubs. And remembering last year where the Cubs didn't get off to a great start. They caught fire, and then they went ice cold at the end of the season and missed the playoffs. Are they a playoff contender? We're going to talk about that, but I wanted to start with this. I love anytime they put out top 10 lists. I, I'm a sucker for these top 10 lists, okay? So I'm going to start with MLB.com's top 10 pitching rotations. How about the Mariners being number one? Um a lot, of, a lot of young arms, though, there. Uh, Atlanta strengthened their rotation this year. The Phillies have a good rotation. Obviously, the Dodgers spent a ton of money, although Yamamoto hasn't really performed yet. How about the Giants adding Blake Snell and feeling pretty good about life? And even the Padres without Blake Snell are number six. Toronto, seven. Diamondbacks, eight. Doesn't surprise me. Guardians nine. And then what, what I love is when you want to just keep on jamming teams in there. So there's a three-way tie for 10th, right? But there's no Cubs on this list. So, you know, that tells me something that the experts don't really think that the Cubs rotation is elite. And you wonder if it is elite, right? Led by Justin Steele. Could have won 20 games last year. Could have won a Cy Young last year. Pitched fantastic. Was the ace of the staff. Kyle Hendricks, remember last year he was injured at the beginning of the year. He had the shoulder and eventually came back. And you know, I get the feeling that there's a chance he might have a really good year. It's a contract year for him. Maybe this is the last year he's going to pitch for the Cubs. I don't think he wants to quit playing baseball. Not that it's ever been a problem for him to be motivated, but um, you know, there he is at number two, a guy that at one point led the national league and earned run average and also was a world series hero. Shota Imanaga. We saw that this guy can strike out some batters and we knew that. And he doesn't walk a lot of guys coming over from Japan. Unlike Yamamoto, he's been really good. I mean, just kind of like, able to make the adjustments after his first start. Now, what's that going to look like at Wrigley Field opening night at home? Because that's when he slated at the start. He'd be the first guy to ever do that at Wrigley Field, to make his debut as a starter um, at Wrigley Field, right? So that's pretty cool. And um, I'm excited about it. So I put him as, you know, a, a person that makes the top three in the rotation pretty solid. And then all we've seen from Wicks is 
that the guy can get it done. I mean, the, anybody that is able to pitch off of a changeup to me at the big leagues, I think that's a good pitch to work off of. And you guys remember last year when he debuted and before he even pitched, I said, hey, the changeup to me makes him really dangerous. Now he's got confidence. He's has experience. He looked good this spring. I'm confident that he's going to have a, a, an excellent year. And then you got, without Jamison Tyon, you got Javier Assad, who you a lot of us feel like is an unsung hero on this uh, pitching staff, right? And, but does does that put them even with Tyon in the top ten with three tens? <laughs> Obviously not. And uh, I thought that was interesting. And to win a World Series, you guys know this: you got to have great pitching, and uh, you want to have excellent starting pitching to kind of get that done. All right. So let's, let's now let's get into the top 10 bullpens, according to MLB.com and then see what they got. All right. Let me put it up on the screen and then we'll, we'll chew on this together. Okay. All right. Uh, number one, they think is the Philadelphia Phillies, the Phillies. If their bullpen would have held up last year, they would have won the world series. I felt like, uh, they, I, I thought they were the best team in the postseason, but they just couldn't hold the, the the lead in Arizona and it cost them. So MLB.com says, Hey, they're number one. There's Atlanta had the best all around team last season. Didn't win. They made a bunch of changes in the off season to try to address that. How about the pirates with the third best bullpen? And you know what? You can win a lot of games with a good bullpen. Um, the Astros, they got Josh Hader. We got Hector Neris. So they're number four. Are the Cubs on this list? Number five, the Tampa Bay Rays. Number six, the Dodgers. The Cardinals are number seven. You know, they went out and got some pitching in the offseason. Milwaukee's number eight. So there's one, two, three teams in the Central that are on this list. Then Minnesota's nine. And the Blue Jays and the Cubs are tied at 10. So they love the tie for 10th where you want to put, you know, a bunch of teams on there. Uh, and, and, and look, I mean, let's talk about where we are right now as far as the bullpen goes, right? Uh, last year, the Cubs had a solid bullpen. But you remember there was the we can win a game bullpen and then there was the we're not going to win bullpen. You know, there was like the A bullpen and the B bullpen. And I thought that that really hurt the Cubs because when you needed to kind of rely on your bullpen, you, you we kind of wore out a lot of those pitchers because they had to work so much. Right. Uh, Carl Edwards, Jr., a lot of people really wanted to see him make the team, felt like he would help the bullpen. I thought that he would be uh, a great asset to the bullpen, but he didn't make it. So that means that they feel pretty comfortable about what they're doing. Okay. Brad Boxberger last year, Michael Rucker last year, Michael Fulmer last year, Keegan Thompson last year, all made the team, right? Well, this year you got Drew Smiley, who was a starter last year in the bullpen, Jose Quas obviously made the trade for him. He worries me, to be honest with you. Um, but I think that he has the potential to be a, a, a really good reliever. Uh, but a lot of his stuff just seems to kind of sit over the plate. And then there's times where he he has trouble throwing strikes. But he'll give you a lot of innings. Yancey Almonte traded the Dodgers to get him. Not sure what to expect. He's had a couple of, of seasons where he's been fantastic. And then he's had... A, a lot of subpar years. And then Hector Neris coming off of his best season. Uh, and you hope that the Cubs are, you know, kind of able to continue what he was able to do. So those are the guys that are new. Uh, but you got to remember, like the, the bullpen was just so solid last year. When, when you talk about uh, Adbert Alzali and then you get into Julia Merriweather, and uh, obviously, Mark Leiter Jr., you know, those those were your go-to guys um, a season ago. Luke Little made the team this year, the big left-hander. I think he's got the potential to be a really dangerous weapon. And there's some guys that didn't make it that I, I think could help in, in the future, right? And I'm, I'm still saying that 
Daniel Palencia could be someone that the Cubs rely on. He's just got to get a little bit better, but he's got all the tools to be a really effective reliever, right? We talked about Hector Neris being in the back end of the bullpen, but this feels like a bullpen to me that just has a lot more answers than it did a year ago. And then if, uh, and when, I guess I really should say when, uh, Jamison Tyone returns, you, you just move Javier Assad into the bullpen and that's going to make your bullpen even better because, you know, he's, he's a good pitcher. So the, the Cubs having a top 10 bullpen, I think is a good thing. Uh, I wonder to myself if their rotation, their starting rotation is a little underrated or, or am I just like looking at this through Cub colored glasses, you know, where I'm like, okay, well, I'm a Cubs guy and I I really want to see (laughs) this pitching staff do well. And so I'm just assuming that, that they're going to be really good. Right. Uh, Another topic that I wanted to get into, and I got to tell you guys, look, one of the things I love to do is I love to read what other people write about the Cubs and and just kind of apply, you know, my opinions to it or uh, just learn stuff. And one of the spots that I go daily to check out information is the uh, is Bleacher Nation, right? So they put this list out on their Twitter. Really loved it, right? It's the list of guys on the IL heading into the season in the division, right? So obviously Cubs are Tyone and Wisdom, right? Cincinnati, who I feel like is the team to beat if it's not the Cubs in the division. Uh, Friedel, uh, Lodolo, who's a really good, dangerous pitcher. McLean, who's someone that, you know, I, I thought he overperformed a little bit last year. Williamson, um, Milwaukee's dealing with some issues as well. Miley, who's obviously they need him after making the trade and giving up Burns. Mitchell, uh, Clark, Williams. Uh, you got the Pirates with, you know, some guys on the list uh, and the Cardinals, right? Well, you, I mean, you right off the bat, Sonny Gray's on there. So you wonder how this is going to affect these teams to start the season and how long these players are going to be on the IL. And the other part of it, too, is that this could have been a lot worse for the Cubs. And I mentioned that before, if it said Hap and it had, you know, uh, magical on there, you know, and then and, and all of a sudden you got four guys on there and you're, you're really digging deep in, in your system to try to figure out, you know, how you're going to throw those guys up there and, you know, and what that means to your roster, you know, and and I know some of you guys, I think that the overall, the overall feeling of the comment section on Ian Happ is split down the middle. Some of you guys love Ian Happ. Some of you guys don't think he's that good. Some of you guys didn't like him batting third last year, but you got to give him a lot of credit. Like he plays a lot. He's a switch hitter. He gets on base. He had the highest on base percentage. And, um, he, he's he, he's a gold glover. He's a one back-to-back gold glove. So him being in the lineup is really important uh, just because he's proven that he, he, he can perform. And when the Cubs were really winning games last year, it was the whole unit. You know, it was it was having Bellinger. It was him. It was Seiya Suzuki doing his thing. So um, as we kind of look ahead, and maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'll see some top 10 lists about best hitters and stuff, but – uh, is it concerning that the staff isn't in the top 10 in a way it is because when you think about the team that won the world series, that had to be one of the top five staffs in baseball. Uh, Jake Arietta, obviously Cy Young award winner, dominant John Lester, um, was just him. I mean, just a beast out there. You know, Kyle Hendricks was kind of that fifth guy that we were wondering, hey, is this he was almost like like Wicks, you know, is he going to be able to handle this? Uh, I think he can. But, you know, and then and and then next thing you know, he's like not only handling it, but he's helping you win the World Series. Um, so John Lackey, don't forget about him. Kind of a crusty veteran that was uh, not the kind of guy you wanted to be on his bad side. But um, Woody, you know, love that team. But they had a, they had a, t- a great rotation, and I think that that's kind of what I'm saying is that this rotation is going to have to outperform that top ten list for the Cubs to win the World Series. And when we start at the beginning of the year, and I know some of you are going, they have no chance. That's what the goal is. And who would have thought the Diamondbacks would have got to the World Series last year? So the roster that the Cubs are starting out with now 
is I guarantee it's going to look a lot different by the end of the season. The marginal players that made the roster, they better perform. You know, the Mike Talkmans and the Nick Madrigals and the Patrick Wisdoms, who's on the IL, those guys are they're going to be fighting for their, their jobs by the middle to the end of the season. Jed Hoyer talked about the young players and, and, and those guys fighting for a spot on the roster. The, the disappointment to me is that we didn't really see any of those guys make it yet, but the excitement is either the guys that are there perform or those young players are going to take their job, and that competition is going to make the Cubs a much better team. Because there is a, there's definitely a push from below uh, for for those guys to uh, get to the big leagues. All right, uh, Jorge Alfaro uh, was released by the Cubs. Had a good spring. There just wasn't a spot for him. One of the weakest positions in the organization. I've talked about this. Don't be surprised. I saw a, a mock draft where the Cubs drafted a catcher first. I, I would not be surprised if they don't draft a catcher or trade for a catcher between you know, now and the draft next year, because it's just a position of need in the organization. Jan Gomes, I love Jan Gomes. He's just, you know, on the upper end of 30. And then Miguel Amaya, uh, like Craig Council said, is going to have to earn playing time. Can he do that? I think he's got the potential, a lot of tools, but I, I don't feel as comfortable when he's in the game as I do when Gomes is in. And then when you get past him, you know, you got, you got Bryce Windham, who's uh, in AAA. It doesn't really feel like the Cubs see him as a, a possibility. And then you, you went out and signed all of those catchers to see if any of them could make it. You know, I think what Hudson's going to go to the minor leagues. I, I think I, I, I got to see how that all shakes out, but there's just not a whole lot of depth in the system. Pablo Aliendo, Moises Ballesteros are two guys who are prospects that are catching by Steros doesn't play enough defense right now to be in that really be considered. And Pablo's got, I think he's got another year or so of really pushing hard, but he could make a change. I, I like him. I think he's going to be in the big leagues eventually. I, I just don't think it's going to be this year. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the final thing though, I wanted to get into today. And, and, and I, I'm talking about this because you guys are talking about this. Um, on Monday, I, I watched the press conference, Shohei Otani, uh, accompanied by his new interpreter, uh, talked about betting, said he didn't bet on baseball or any other sport, said that his interpreter stole money from him, his former interpreter, and uh, to the tune of $4 million. I, I just, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm a frugal guy, uh, and, I, and I've never had the issue of millions and millions of dollars, but I mean, like at some point, wouldn't you know that, that there's a big chunk of money that's missing and gamblers are involved? Uh, but he said, no, I, you got to take him for his word. It's baseball's job to prove that he's lying. And I, I don't even know that they have the appetite to do that. I think some of you guys have said that as well. I, I don't know that in this day and age we'd ever see another Pete Rose situation where a guy got, you know, kicked out of baseball, but it would be bad for the game if Shohei Otani was involved in gambling other than his money being stolen from him. So um, that's what his statement was. And then they're finding out that his interpreter, which is crazy, lied on his resume about a bunch of stuff and, uh, you know, where he went to school and, and places he worked. Uh, but Otani liked him anyway. So it's it's definitely a fascinating situation, one that is bad for the game of baseball. And, uh, you know, and obviously with the best player in the game being involved in this, um, you know, that's that's no good as well. But you guys tell me what you think in the comments section. Love reading your comments. You know that. I try to respond to you guys on a daily basis. Appreciate all of you guys hanging out. We're through spring training. The last few games against the Cardinals were miserable. Look <laughs> like nobody wanted to be in those games except the Cardinals. <laughs> it's just weird when you're watching the Cardinals just wear out the Cubs. But the Cubs just, you could tell, hey, we're thinking Texas right now, and you guys are playing game seven of the World Series. I don't know what to say that. Uh, like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, guys. Thank you for hanging out with us, and uh, we will talk to you again tomorrow right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel.